Morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Car Addiction. Today, it's another buying guide. Finally, I'm going to be making a buying guide for that Mercedes S55 AMG. It is very similar to um, any other W220 S-Class video. So if you are planning to get a uh, S-Class, um, could be any other, uh, the 15 variants of uh, S-Class Mercedes produced for on the world, this is the video for you. The model year for this Mercedes S-Class is from 1998 to 2006. On the other hand, Mercedes are also known by their chassis code, and this is the W220 chassis code. Now, pretty similar to this is the W140 chassis code, and that is a hell of an S-Class. Every dictator in Africa or anywhere else in the world had a W140. You can go to the top 10 dictator list and find their top, find their vehicles that they used. You're going to see a stretched out version of the W140, and that is an amazing vehicle. It was built to last high quality and can't talk enough about it. But today's subject matter is the W220. When it comes to the reliability issue of that, W220 did not have the cream. During the research and production of W220, Mercedes uh, did cut down some cost and they spent the saved money on a lot of new tech and new unproven tech so a lot of the problems in this vehicle has to do with electronics in technicality there is two version of the w220 the first version is from 1998 to 2001 and there's a facelift version which is this one is from 2002 to 2006. when you're looking for your s class try to look for the facelift version because Mercedes fixed a lot of uh, quality issues, uh, plastic quality issues and uh, uh, interior leathering issues and electronic issues on the W220 model. Mercedes fixed a lot of quality issues related to plastic, leather and electronic on their 2002 model. So it is your best bet to buy a specimen from 2002 to 2006. On the other hand, AMG started tuning these uh, uh, S-Class from 2002 to 2006. Now, this one is a 2002. The 2002 AMG has a 5.4 liter naturally aspirated V8. 2003 onwards will have a compressor model. In terms of reliability on the drivetrain itself, they are pretty reliable. Uh, sometimes uh, they will develop some quirks uh, on the automatic transmission, but uh, you're going to find a lot of high mileage examples uh, if you look around. And uh, um, this naturally aspirated 5.4 liter V8 can take a lot of beating. It's easier to work on and less things can go wrong. And if you are considering a diesel version of it, um, try to stay away from the 4 liter uh, uh, a four liter diesel and when you are considering to buy a diesel make sure the injectors has been either serviced or replaced because uh, that is one of their major problem in the motor and uh, they and they will cost you a pretty penny in terms of parts and labor especially if you go to a Mercedes dealer they will they will have a field day if you know what I mean now, if you are looking for a uh, 2003 onwards AMG version of it, uh, most of the stuff that I'm going to talk about in this car will relate to that car, except the motor, because that is technically a different motor. Uh, the motor itself is uh, uh, pretty bulletproof. Uh, it can take a lot of beating. You have to keep an eye on the compressor itself, which is the supercharger. There should, be, there should not be any loud supercharger whine unless it has been tuned or has been swapped out uh, there should not be any pulley play and uh, try to buy an compressor model which has not been modded so 
example, somebody didn't tune it, somebody didn't go with a uh, upgraded pulley size and all that. Try to buy a unmolested version. Let's start from the engine bay. Mercedes has produced 1515 different variants of the motor. So uh, the most recommended variant of the motor is the 5.4 liter V8 or any of the other V8. Uh, you can definitely go with the AMG Tune V8 has 385 horse over the 290. Uh, but V8 is the one you should be looking for because they can generally take a lot of abuse and the least amount of reliability issues. Next on the list, the Achilles heel of these vehicles are the aromatic suspension. If you are from Europe and if you are looking at a uh, S230, the smaller variant, and you happen to have a vehicle which is on standard coilover suspensions, go for it. That is amazing. But in North America, I have not heard or came across an S class which is on coilovers. Everything is everything comes with the aromatic system, and that is the main reason these vehicles are dropping its value significantly because these systems are very very un unreliable and very expensive to maintain there are a couple of uh, companies out there who are actually making a conversion kit uh, Strutmasters if you just google Strutmasters uh, and you're going to find them and they make a conversion kit very inexpensive compared to working on a formatic suspension and if you are a little handy with the wrench I'm sure you can put it on and they also have the electronic blocker to turn off that uh, the lights on your dash. Major problem with the aromatic system is the high pressure shocks they leak over time and if you leave it, if you leave it sitting for a couple of hours it may go down that's a really big leak uh, for this specific vehicle I have to leave it for maybe four or five days and it goes down and it's uh, a little bit more acceptable than anything but yeah uh, the other thing you need to keep in mind is uh, the air pump that pumps these shocks uh, the air pump is expensive and it takes a decent amount of uh, labor to replace them so if you go to a Mercedes dealer they're going to have a field day with you they're gonna love you for it because you are probably going to be looking towards a fifteen hundred to a five thousand dollar bill uh, depending on what else is wrong with it in your pre-purchase inspection there's a very easy way to test if the suspension and the pump is uh, working well all you have to do is uh, start the vehicle and then you're going to have to press this button up to the high setting down to the lowest setting and up to the high setting and you have to do it five to ten times and you should be noticing a significant increase like you should be able to feel it inside the vehicle that the vehicle is going up and down and if that's the case then then the suspension is working if that's not the case go back to your truck car or whatever you came in and run Next on the list is rust on the body panels. Until 2006, Mercedes used a water-based paint, especially in the fenders, and the fenders are also not galvanized. The whole body of the vehicle is galvanized steel, but the fenders and the doors are, uh, I guess, regular steel. So the water-based paint, um, and uh, since uh, you are in a country like this, that, uh, you see a healthy amount of snow and salt on the ground you're going to notice a lot of rust uh, on pretty much all the vehicles in this time um, especially they're going to be on the fender wells and doors believe me you won't find anything else under the body because the body is galvanized steel so you're saved on that as long as the rust is not too bad there's nothing through and uh, you have a de decent body shop that uh, can give you a decent rate on fixing it yeah go for it 
Next thing to check in your automatic body control, my cheat sheet is flying away, is make sure you park the vehicle in a flat spot. And once you do that, take your trusty fingers and use your fingers as a gauge because there's three fingers, okay? I'm going to go on the other side, three fingers, and almost three fingers. Uh, it's a little tight. Now, I always knew this side is just a tad lower than the other side. So going back, uh, the, the fronts are fine. Uh, make sure your car is sitting level because the uh, active bo body uh, control or the leveling system is another problem with this suspension. And it's not easy fix. You need very expensive tools to figure out exactly what's going on. It's a Mercedes dealer only kind of option or a Mercedes specialty shop kind of thing. And they are going to have a field day when you take this to get repaired. So another reason you can go to strutmaster.com and get a set of coilover conversion kits and I'm not getting paid by Trust Strutmaster, but uh, the way it's going on, I will probably go forward and go about it. As I said earlier in the video, this car is loaded with technology and since a lot of these technologies are early adoption by Mercedes, um, there are a lot of things will go wrong and you need to keep an eye on the parking sensors. In this vehicle, the parking sensors are a little loopy and I'm not going to fix them. Uh, alternator. Uh, in this vehicle, the alternator uh, bearing makes a noise. Uh, it's working, but uh, it's one of those things uh, that I need to change. Uh, it's not that expensive, actually, out of everything. And it's very, it's right in in front of you so it's a very easy easy job to do navigation system is very antiquate and uh, well it, it, it is from 2002 but this navigation system was actually developed in 1998 or probably a little before that so if the nav doesn't work don't sweat it move on ESP ABS SRS uh, these are also very hectic and uh, very complicated system they will go bad and it's just a matter of a understanding and compromise how many dash lights you can live with. The seats, these seats are amazing. They are both electronic seats, front and back, uh, massages and heated, cooled, especially this car. It's a very special one because it has captain's share in the back. Correct me if I'm wrong, they were probably another $10,000 option on top of the AMG package. Uh, these seats, the heated seats and uh, the seat controls, they go back all the time, all the time. And um, there are a lot of technology stuff in the center console. As you can see, I'm missing that because it wasn't working. I took it off to fix it. It, was, it wasn't worth the time. Uh, the fridge in the center console back uh, does not work and it will go back. These doors, if you didn't know already, are... Uh, that didn't work. If you didn't... Come on! Soft close doors. And they are not reliable. There's also instance of uh, water leakage into the cabin, so... Uh, uh, make sure uh, while you're buying it, uh, you take this car through a car wash. And if you see any water leakage, uh, it's depending on where the trim piece or uh, the weather ceiling is leaking, they're not that expensive. But uh, make sure you uh, make sure the interior does, is not moldy or smells bad. Did you ever wonder what the S for S class stands for? You guessed it right, it stands for special. Next on the list to notice is if you go with one of the AMG variants, they will come with this AMG monoblock rims and these rims are staggered. If you notice the front and the back has a bit of lip 
and the back tire is 275 4 key 18 and the front is 245 45 18 the the front's uh the 245 45 18 is a very decent tire you can find it pretty much any tire shop but when it comes to the 275 40 18 you don't really have much option you kind of have to go with one of the more expensive name brand uh, like michelin pilot sport and i was coded almost 485 bucks a tire for michelin pilot sport i'm not using a michelin pilot sport i found a ch cheap chinese uh company let's see what is this called huh Jinyu. Yeah, I found a cheap Chinese Jinyu tire brand, and still they were 200 bucks a pop. Okay, they're 400 dollars for the tires, and if you notice, these are wide, wide, very wide tires. They do grip. They do grip very good. Uh, probably because they're wide, not necessarily Jinyu is a good tire brand. I can only imagine a uh, Michelin Pilot Sport what they would do. Last but not the least, uh, these are the most technologically advanced vehicle from the 1990s. And that says a lot about this vehicle. A lot of things can go wrong, but if you are a little handy, if you can ignore certain things on the dash or on the vehicle, these cars, you should be buying them. They, back in the day, uh, this specific vehicle uh, costed over six figures, over a hundred thousand dollars. I bought it for a thousand bucks. It took me another fifteen hundred bucks to fix it, but it's doable. And if I helped you by any way choosing the right vehicle for you, please consider subscribing to my channel because I do make a lot of repair videos for this Mercedes because this has been an experience. Stay tuned.